So the truth is the YBS or Youngblood's uh, secret sauce or Brody Moss's secret sauce isn't really a secret. It never really was because people um, who watched the show on YouTube were able to quickly identify this pretty non-distinct bottle. Uh, it's QP mayonnaise. There's no, um, there's no real secret there. So why am I making this video? Um, well, two things. First of all, his zinc product is not well known, uh, if at all. But um, as far as this QP mayo, the goal of this channel is to really save people uh, time, money, and frustration. And um, most people will not know that uh, there are actually two types of QP mayonnaise. There's one um, that's made in the U.S. and there's one that's made right in Japan. Uh, they are distinct. These two are the ones from Japan. This is the original packaging. Um, this is, as I said, it's very non-distinct. There's actually some etching in here, which you may not be able to pick up on the camera. I'm not sure if I get the angle that you can see it. Um, but the one in Japan, um, what are the differences? The one in Japan is 500 grams. The one in the U.S. is 12 ounces. Um, the biggest difference, well, a couple ingredients, but the big difference in one ingredient is the monosodium glutamate, and um, that's known as the MSG. Uh, MSG got a bad rap in the 80s. It was, um, <laughs> that's why a lot of Chinese restaurants in America will advertise no MSG because the Chinese uh, cooking used to use a lot of MSG. But it's, um, it, it was known to cause headaches or some stuff like that. I looked it up. Um, it did not seem harmful to me, and especially the small quantities that I'm using. I've never had any effects from it. But um, a lot of people attribute the uh, savory taste of this mayo to that MSG. And this mayo is unlike any U.S. mayo, anything like Hellman's. It, it is a distinct flavor. It is absolutely great. Um, I've tried it. I've tried the uh, YBS wraps. I've used it on uh, fried fish and it's delicious. I don't know that I would use it on everything that Brody does, like pizza. I don't know if that's just for the show, but um, uh, it, it is great stuff. A um, couple of the other ingredients that are in the U.S. product, and I don't have, unfortunately, I don't have one to show you, but um, it's got mustard flour in it. It also has red wine vinegar, and it also has yeast extract. And I'm told that the American version tastes very different to the Japanese version. So, um, in the uh, interest of saving you some time, money, and frustration, you know, nothing like being, you know, ordering it online. And, uh, and by the way, I put a link in the uh, description below for, for the real one. Um, but nothing like ordering it online and waiting for that delivery and then getting the wrong thing. And worst case, you wouldn't even know you got the wrong thing. You end up with the American version and then you say, oh, what the hell? This is not so great. This tastes like my, uh, my, my, my helmet. So why don't you guys have the right one? This is it. Look for the Japanese one, the Japanese writing. Look for this bottle, uh, this non-distinct bottle in this kind of packaging and you'll be all right. Um, as far as zinc, it's a whole other story. Um, I just flashed this one. This is called Zinca. Um, nothing to really do with Brody, but um, I'll get to that in a second. But Brody um, is a big proponent of sun protection. He talks about zinc all the time. He applies it on all, or has it on on almost every episode. And yet, despite everybody asking him, he never actually tells you what, or he's never actually said what brand he uses. And um, some of the skeptics will say that's because he's not getting, you know, he's not getting paid to promote it. Um, I think it's, I'm, I'm optimist. I, you know, I'm going with the, uh, ignorance factor. I think he just thinks that everybody, um, has zinc sticks available, which they're not really available outside of the, um, the Australia. They're much more popular. They're found in every local drugstore. There, there are generic brands. Um, I think he thinks zinc is just zinc and you no know, need to distinguish, but who knows, uh, for whatever reason, even the local, uh, Australians, um, People have asked this online and people have come up with, you know, various answers for brand names. Somehow I went down a couple of rabbit holes. I ended up doing, um, just actually because of my, my personal situation, I had uh, some pre-cancer on my nose, bridge of my nose. And um, uh, that's why I had this. I, I, I've used zinc before for um, when I've had you know, cuts that I didn't want from the scar. And um, this was a great brand, but um, this is made in the, in the U.S. However, it's made in California, but um, this has 25% zinc in it, but this is this, the largest tube that they carry that has the 25%. The other brand, uh, their larger size tubes only have 20% zinc, um, which is on the, not lower end, it's on the, actually on the higher end compared to most zinc products. 
uh, but too low for me. And so um, I thought, oh, well, it's, what's, what, was, what does Brody use? This guy's, you know, puts it on every day, must be good. So I, uh, I tried long and hard to find out what he uses, and um, I was able to rule out the ones that were suggested online by local Australians. It was not the products that he mentioned. Um, and um, then one, one episode, um, I thought I had an idea of what he was using, and one episode, um, he came close to revealing it. I don't know if he edits it out on purpose or whatever, but Jack was actually using some, and he kind of flashed the bottle. Um, anyway, um, I'm 95 or 99 percent sure he's using either the original Cancer Council sticks or um, some generic form of that. They have a couple of pharmacy brands or just generics. Now, the problem with that, um, I was ready to import that, ready to buy it, and have it shipped here, but there's a chemical in there, and I'm going to show it to you in a second online, but there's a chemical in there that uh, has not been approved by the FDA, and it's not been approved by, in the EU, and it's been known to cause uh, problems with the prostate and, and the reproduction system. So if any of you um, have a direct line into Brody or um, <laughs> able to reach him, or maybe, I don't know, well, willingly one day he'll watch us, but uh, yeah, uh, you may want to look into that, you know, uh, like you suggest, you, you know, you may still not care and um, it's a chemical blocker, but, you know, word to the wise, um, it's, it's, it stopped me from, uh, from, from getting that product and um, I'll show that to you in a second. And uh, here you go. Government uh, classic uh, zinc sunscreen stick from the Cancer Council. They all, all the generics, the pharmacy brands, they all seem to replicate the same thing and show the same ingredients. Um, below, it's actually the methyl benzylidine camphor, four uh, percent. That's that's the uh, controversial ingredient. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Is a chemical blocker as opposed to a physical blocker like the uh, zinc. And it's a UV filter that hasn't been approved as an active ingredient for sunscreens in the U.S. or Europe. Um, or Japan, I don't believe. I think it has been approved in Canada and obviously the, uh, Australia. But the research um, has cited concerns over the thyroid toxicity, um, hormone disruption, um, reproductivity, and, and they basically recommend that the chemical not be used in sunscreen. It'll stick and you can see it listed as an ingredient down below. And um, generic zinc stick. Iodine camphor are listed there as well, all with the 4%. They all have the same 25% zinc oxide and, and the rest of them I'm not going to even try to pronounce, um, as well as these generics. You might be familiar with the EWG. Here in the U.S. it's not widely known, as well known. It stands for the Environmental Working Group. They are a not-for-profit organization that basically looks out for the well-being of all humans across the globe. Uh, they produce uh, unbiased reports on uh, the products that we use every day, as well as our environment. So, you know, this is their take on it, their summary, uh, the, you know, the, the concerns over the hormone disruption, the th thyroid toxicity, and, and reprodu reproductivity. And so uh, I presented you guys with the data. It's up for you guys to decide. I'm holding off right now on using these products. but. It's for, you know, as they say, to each their own. I just wanted you guys to have the information. You can find more on Wikipedia, on the FDA website, on the EU website. It's obviously controversial because it's been approved in, the, uh, in Australia and Canada, but not in the U.S. and not in, in Europe, not in Japan. I think there's one other country that hasn't approved it as well. So, um, yeah, I guess it's for each, each person to decide on their own. Uh, if you guys choose to go forward, use it. It's up to you guys, and um, maybe the word will get out to the YBS crew, and they can make an, uh, an informed decision for themselves. As far as the mayo, this stuff is delicious. Um, I, as I said, I've tried it on fish. It's delicious. It's great on fried fish, especially. Uh, you can make those wraps, the genuine YBS wraps that I'm a fan of as well. And uh, yeah, if you found this at all helpful, uh, please give it a thumbs up down below and um, subscribe if you'd like to see more. And uh, hopefully I will see you guys in the future. Cheers.